Good evening. I would like to inform you that we've had a jail escape that happened between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. this morning. This is through the investigation of the jail staff that it was noted that a Terrell Miles, 29 years of age, of 413 North Mercer Street, Rocky Mount, was not found in his bunk at 7 a.m. check. He was last there last night during a check and at breakfast check this morning he was gone. He is being incarcerated on aid and abet and armed robbery, possession of a firearm by a felon, and he was booked in on Valentine's Day, 214 of 19 at 941 p.m. He was in the dorm area where there's 40 inmates in this area. Sometimes during the night he left his assigned bunk and went out through a malfunctioning back door and possibly looks through the investigation that he crawled under the fence and is at large. And at this time, we have investigators from our CID unit, the task force, and other members looking for him at this time running investigations. Any questions? So, the inmates that escaped in March, it appears as though this was a very similar way that they got out. Is it's that right? Exact same way. So, how did this happen again? It's happening through a lock system and the doors. These doors are old, they're dilapidated. And as with running a jail, you have got to go through processes to get this. We are in the process working with the commissioners and the county manager's office of upgrade this, but obviously you have to do plans and things have to be meet standards and all that. It's not like we can go down to Lowe's and get a door. It's just a process that we're going through. And that at this time, what we're doing is taking the inmates. We have 88 inmates that were taken out of here. We're working with uh, Eric Hooks with the Department of Public Safety, and I want to thank the state of North Carolina for stepping up and offering their assistance to take these inmates, and Kenneth Laster, who was over the uh, Department of Corrections, is gratefully taking these inmates while we take them out. I feel it's an urgent need for the safety of the people of Nash County, for the inmates and the staff to get these people out of here until we get this situation corrected, and then we'll bring the inmates back in. But through the partnerships with our jail and Department of Corrections in the state of North Carolina, we're in the process of moving these individuals. So are they all being moved to the Nash County Correctional Institution? They are not. They're going to be moved to uh, different facilities. I don't want to put that out there because obviously anytime you're doing transportation, right. that puts at risk and uh, we're going to do that at a time and the locations is being kept confidential. So when you're talking about doors, possibly fencing, needing, I mean, what all do you, would you like to see replaced to make it, prevent this from happening again? And any idea what kind of cost that would run up to? I'm not in the contracted business on the jails, but I'm sure it's going to have a substantial cost to it. However, these jails were built in the 1960s all the way up into the 1990s, uh, add-on parts and things of that nature, and it's just got, we've got to correct the issues here and we've got to look at it. However, the county commissioners have put together a staff of different individuals that are looking at the jail needs and what we need to do to correct this. It's not gone on blind eyes. What has been done since the last inmate escape? Uh, just last week we had Georgia Detention working on the doors and looking at the doors. It takes specialty units to do that. They just come through looking at these doors and uh, working to ensure that the safety and where they're at. But like I said, some of the stuff's built in the 1960s and obviously, you know, you're going to have this type of, of instance. The staff, obviously you look at the staff where what was going on during that time, but uh, it's one of the things during the investigation we're going to figure out exactly what happened and go back and do interviews. This is a very preliminary moment. We don't know exactly what happened, and I would hate to substantiate anything like that. There are plenty of homes right around uh, this facility. Is there any fear? Uh, There's to the not. Public? Uh, we think that he has left. And as I said, we've got investigations going on. We have patrol out. Uh, National Police Department's working with us. Rocky Mountain Police Department, Edgecombe County Sheriff's Office. It's a collaborative effort, and we will get our man. It'll just take a little bit of time, but we're working tirelessly, and we won't stop him until we do. Is, is he considered dangerous? I would consider him dangerous. He's uh, in jail for aiding and abetting armed robbery and felony with a firearm. And I want to get him as soon as possible. And I urge the public 
He's got a very unique markings on his face. Uh, he shaved his head, and he should be very easy to pick out. I urge the public to reach out to us and let us know something. That's the way we did it all in our investigations. With our last jail escape, people spoke up, and we had these people in custody in very short order. And I think this happened again, and I'm urging the public to do that. When you say you feel like he's left, do you feel like there was probably someone outside who provided transportation for him? I'm sure at some times, knowingly or not knowingly, but uh, obviously I think he has had transportation. And that's pure speculation at this time. From a mental perspective, do you believe inmates may feel emboldened seeing that there was an inmate escape in the past that they now have found a way out that has not been addressed yet? And that's the reason that we're taking these inmates out of here at this time. And as sheriff of Nash County, to ensure the people of Nash County the safety, I'm taking these people out of here and not putting them back in there until I am sure these doors are fixed and that the jail is secure. So that is the entire population for the jail? That is not the entire population. There is population areas in there that is secure, but the pod systems where there's 40 inmates in these pods and they're just free wheel walking around, we've got to do a better job of security on that end. So those 40, just to clarify, those 40 are going to be moved, the remainder will stay in the facility? The remainder will, but there's probably 88 people that will be moved out that are in pods or that are in the pod systems of one, two, and three. They're bay areas and they're not, you don't have the ability to lock these people down to sales and have them confined. They're just in a bay area. What was your reaction getting the news this morning that a dangerous inmate had escaped? It's disheartening. And it just tells us we've got to step up our game and we're going to work tirelessly through the night. It's going to be a long night and it'll be a long tomorrow. But we're going to bring it back to justice. Thank you.